Hi, Jamie Ruby, Sci-Fi Vision. Thanks for talking to us today. So can you talk a bit about how important you think friendship is to their survival and everything? Uh, Zach, then Aiden. Yeah, no, I think that friendship is super important. I think that uh, with any friendship, when put in you know high stress situations, it definitely tests that friendship. It tests the interpersonal relationship of the people involved in the friendship. And I think, again, with this show, this is the highest of stakes. And, you know, with the closest of friends, like Scotty and Bo, for example, it tests them, it tests new friendships, like, you know, Seth and, and Roth, and there's uh, countless possibilities when it comes to high stakes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there, there's a lot of friendships that are kind of forced, to, you know, you kind of ha you kind of have to, they kind of have to be made while, while on the island and in this situation, you know, it's such a drastic environment to be placed in um i think i think you do see like evolution of friendships and, and the ups and downs of, of a lot of them like like scotty and Bo, you kind of see how they're the best of friends and then you kind of you know you kind of get a flashback as to what happened and um yeah I, I think i think friendships are very important while while watching the show great thank you so much and congratulations on the show thank you jamie Thanks. lisa you may go ahead Elisa Heiser, Shout Out Media. Um, congrats on this show. One thing I love is the structure of each character. Even though you're playing one character, it kind of feels like three with the way it's broken up. You have the before, you have the deserted, and then you have the after. Um, yeah. Which part of the character were you most excited to kind of dive into of those three parts? You can start with um, Aiden. I think, I mean, I think all of them, honestly. I mean, after was really fun because because I feel like Henry kind of starts becoming a little more um, aware or, or he, his, his thoughts are kind of finalized in a way because he has, you know, he, he has his thoughts and, and what he thinks. But I think by the end, he, he really has come to a conclusion, which I think that was really fun to play. But I mean, I think I think that Henry is a very different person than me. So I guess, you know, diving into that and getting to play like that emo personality was really fun and, and different for me, for sure. Um, I would say for me, I really enjoyed Post Rescue Raw because it was so vastly different from who he was when he starts. And in fact, um, we actually shot my interrogation really early on in production and then reshot it right before we wrapped. And it was such an incredible opportunity of, of Sarah, our, our incredible show creator and our director at the time, and me just kind of figuring out who this new rock was going to be. And we did so many iterations of it. And now finally getting to watch the show and see what the iteration they went with is so exciting for me as the actor after getting to watch and, and play for so long. So I'm really, I really love where we ended up and I'm really excited to see where he moves on. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you, Lucy. Gig, you may go ahead. Yeah, Gig Patter with LRM Online. I'm gonna jump on on what Lisa was actually talking about. <clears throat> Could you, as, a, as an actor, um, which setting was was you know most adventurous for you that you look forward to in doing because you know you you have you have the real setting you have you know the island setting and then you have the bunker setting so which which was um you know the best experience for you i think that each one holds such different and special memories for me i think that um you know, a lot of the bunker stuff, I, I as, as we see in the trailer, that Roth and, and Leah have an interaction. And so those are some of the really fun memories for me. And also, like I said, with those interrogation stuff, like it's really challenging. And, and it's a lot of just a camera staring at your face for eight hours and trying to make sure that you're doing the story justice and conveying what you need to convey and, and answer the questions that we, that they're asking you. Um, and I think with the, and then you have the, the, the island, which within itself, the environment is actually a character in this show as well. And it goes through moods and sometimes it's in a great one and sometimes it's really pissed off. And so you just kind of get to ebb and flow with the environment and allow that to kind of inform your character and how you show up on the day. That's how each take is so different, I think. Aiden? Yeah, I'd say on the island for sure. I mean, as an actor, it's like being able to be in that environment of, you know, we actually shot, on, on Stradbroke Island in, in Australia. Um, and it was just a, such a, I feel like such a rare and, and unique experience that, you know, I don't know if we'll, we'll get again, like feeling that creatively fulfilled um, and being able to do stuff like I've, I've always wanted to do as an actor. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, I'd say the island just because, you know, the 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 weather was up and down, you know, you never knew what you were getting, you'd be up at, you know, 4am, you know, rolling up to the beach, and it's just like, whoa, you know, but we had like, a great crew looking out for us and, you know, making sure we were warm and uh, took real good care of us. Great deal. Thank you. Thank you. How much do you think personalities versus skills and abilities kind of played into who the characters decided to trust and follow without, you know, spoiling, obviously. Um, I think greatly, I think, you know, especially with Aiden's character, for example, like his character has so much um, scout knowledge, which I think informs a lot of it. I think that also there's a, a skill within crowd gathering and, and camaraderie and leadership that I think other characters in this show really amplify as well. Um, I think that it really is each character provides a necessary attribute for this ecosystem to work simultaneously and sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worst. But I think that, yeah, I think that every, every skill that each character brings by happenstance uh, comes into it, comes into play at least one at some point. Okay. Aiden? Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with Zach for sure. I think every, character is so different and has their own skills and abilities that they bring to the island and and I feel like every single character kind of is helpful in a way and and brings its own energy that that you know creates um that uh, that creates resolution and also like conflict as well um I think I just think they all kind of like they all kind of clash like everyone's personality clashes but in a, in a cool way like I feel like it it, it helps keep things moving you know right all right thank you thank you and i know that this is obviously a drama but you guys obviously have a lot of chemistry do you have a funniest moment that either happened behind the scenes or something that would end up on a blooper reel for the actual show a lot I feel like a lot behind the scenes it's like endless my photo library keep going <laughs> <laughs> yeah aiden's photo library is the blooper reel within itself yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would say that there's definitely several moments that I think of, of just like absolute, again, when you're out in the heat for eight hours a day, and just kind of doing the same lines over and over again, you start to feel like you're going a little bit crazy, because it just feels like it's a groundhog day, like every 20 minutes. Um, but, you know, I, there's there was a time when we, um, we were shooting a scene, and we're on this ledge, and we shot this in a soundstage for about three days. And one of our fellow castmates, Miles, got sick and uh had a cold while we were shooting this and as the week went on his voice just got deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and so each time he said his line it was like a different iteration of the line itself and it just got funnier and you know you're inside with eight people there's just it's just chaos it's absolute chaos but it's it's a real blast yeah um one one of the things that um, part part in them. I'll, I'll be honest, uh, especially with you, Aiden. Is uh, um, if I was actually stranded on the island, I would probably throw Henry first into the ocean. <laughs> but uh, but if if you guys were stuck on this island with these characters, who would you vote off first? Who would I off first? Yeah. Um. You know, I think I disagree with you on Henry because even though he's a he's a you know he's a know it all and says things at the wrong time, his not I feel like his knowledge get you know keeps some things moving. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean it's a lot of this in the ear. Um, but I, I wouldn't say Henry. I'd say uh, maybe like Scotty. Scotty, huh? I love Reed. I love, I love <laughs> Scotty. <Yeah. laughs> You can be a uh, Scotty can be a lot sometimes. That's true. What about you, Zach? I think it's I think it's an important distinction to ask at what point in the season are we <laughs> voting them off? Because if we're going day one, I I'm gonna vote off Kieran. That guy, that guy's he's gotta go. He's got he's gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you yourselves were stranded alone on a desert island, do you think you would survive? And what modern convenience would you miss the most? Zach, then Aiden. No, I would not survive. <laughs> Full stop. 
full stop. It would end as quickly as it began. Um, I am not a very, I've never been a historically very outdoorsy person. I'm working on it. And this show has definitely forced me to become more comfortable with it over time. Um, and what thing would I miss the most? Um, I would really miss my car. I, I, I driving is like my therapy. And I feel like if, if I lost that, even being in Australia for six months and not being able to drive was, was rough. So on a deserted Island with nothing, I would, I would very much greatly miss that. I get that. Aiden. You did drive by the way. We knew, we okay. Knew. That was, that was one time and it was, it was not very easy. Stick shift and on the other side of the road is not great. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I would not survive. Uh, obviously. I mean, I think, being i think being on a deserted island is it's just like i don't know how you could survive even like the the most extreme survivalist i know i don't know um yeah i would not be able to survive and i would miss i would miss uh my family you know pretty straightforward answer but obviously I'd miss my family and um my friends that, that was a good answer. I should I should have yeah. said that. Now I feel bad choosing an object. <laughs> well, I did I did say an object. So that's okay. All right. Thank you both of you. you did say an object. Yeah, I said okay. modern convenience. But that's okay, okay, great, great, great. Still, still want to do your Thank family. God. All right. Like my mom's gonna see this. Um, I know that I want a season three. We live leave on a big cliffhanger, but going into season three, what is the who is the female character you most want to see your character interact with? I know we did get, you know, um, Zach, your character interacted with Leah a lot, but what other character do you want to see them with most? <laughs> um, I say this because I was talking to you the other day. I was talking to Erna. And she was saying it was so funny watching, because again, they weren't with us when we shot any of our boys stuff, obviously. And she was like watching it. I was just like, Tony would just kick the crap out of Roth. And so now I just desperately want to have a Roth and Tony scene just to see how those two forces would interact, um, especially Roth in the bunker post Island. I would say um, Henry and Dot think that would be very interesting um yeah i feel like it'd be a survivor match off like which right? one actually has the most knowledge no so, right thank yeah you. dot and henry on survivor let's see who wins <laughs> let's go great now um you know um a lot of a lot of the scenes um with long production hours you probably have a lot of uh, downtime as a, in a different round table. Um, some people mentioned that Aiden's a, a musician um, um, for, for yourself. Uh, we could imagine what you, you, you've done. So Aiden, how, how much uh, music composition uh, that you got actually done during, during this time? And Zach, what did you do during your downtime? Um, did get a lot done. It, it actually, it wasn't for me. I actually didn't get any done for me I, I you know this is my first uh time as an actor where I've gotten to you know build a character and and, and grow and do like an, a character arc and um I really wanted to focus on that so I kind of took a break from music I guess but I mean I worked on like Reed Reed who plays Scotty I worked on we did we made some songs together and then he put those out and that's really cool because we just did that in the hotel room and it's funny because you know we'd shoot for like a week on the island and then the girls would go shoot and we'd have like two weeks off so we would just be going there's a place called paddock bakery that i have to shout out it's the best bakery of all time in australia um it's the best paddock bakery that's what we did yeah zach what did um, you do downtime? for me aiden aiden helped me put a track down which was super special mm -hmm. and really fun to do together um i i cannot praise him enough at night like he has accomplished so much at such a young age and i constantly just look at him in awe and go like i've done nothing with my life um so i i i am he's incredible um what did i do with my downtime besides that i made it through uh 10 seasons of shameless that was a big feat for me uh and i went to paddock bakery a lot and i just like hung out with these guys like you know it's like summer camp you just you you spend every waking moment together and hang out and watch tv and go to the mall and watch you know it's it's really lovely i mean it was it was like getting 
a whole new family again because we were in Australia, so our fa- our personal families couldn't come. So it really was this group of people was your new family, and I got I got the best family in the world. So I'm super stoked. It's so special, you know, I mean, like be- being able to be there for five and a half months, obviously, you know, we'll find our groups and like we broke off into groups and like now we have like these beautiful friendships that, you know, we'll never forget. And like we just saw it in our last week, like, you know, we're all like pretty close and it's really special. That is, that is great to hear. And now I feel like I should fly across the world to Paddock's Bakery. Just Paddock's Bakery. <laughs> If you got if you got a spare week, I can't stress it enough. That's you definitely got spare, you got a spare day. That's a day it's away. Spare day. <laughs> yeah. like a day do an trip. interview there. Do an interview there. It's a tax write off. Easy done. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Should I go again? All right. Um. So, uh, how far in advance did you guys get kind of all the information going on? And before you knew everything, were there any kind of crazy theories floating around? um before we knew what was going on in terms of like each episode or like what the last episode would be just like the arc of the whole season so yeah. the arc of the whole show I think that everyone kind of had their own different experience with how they found out about the show I found out about my arc pretty early just because I was shooting a lot of my um stuff first um and I had to kind of know what I was talking about so um I learned a lot of my stuff pretty early on but for the most part I only knew the rough outline there there were so many twists and turns and literally every day we would like come to set and be like so when we get in when we get the next script and I remember we were shooting a scene for 207 when we all got the email the same time we had gotten the script for 208 and I think Amy has a has a video of us like literally running around the jungle screaming and shouting (laughs) that we got 208 and like we were all so excited about it so they keep it pretty lock and key um and we just find out in real time which I think is just you know it's like Christmas morning every three or four weeks so it's it's really exciting yeah we didn't know much about season two when we booked the role I mean when we all hopped on the plane we knew nothing I mean we didn't even know each other we we yeah. were like trying to look around like okay who could play a 17 year old 18 year old on <laughs> tv um and we figured it out and then like while we were in quarantine in in Australia like we got the first two scripts and we all like hopped on a zoom and we're so stoked and like reading them and um yeah, I mean, like Zach said, it was pretty under wraps. It kind of, we kind of knew things as, you know, as we got the scripts. And um, it's also a trickle down system. Like one person would hear one thing and then they would tell another person. And then it truly became a game of telephone. And it would be fairly far fetched if, if the last person had anything to do with what the original thing had been <laughs> in the first place. Yeah, we all got, I and mean, also we like, we all got meetings with, with Sarah and Amy before we, was it before we started shooting or like mm-hmm. while as we were shooting yeah. um, to really like, you know, go in deep about our characters and really figure out, you know, what was the purpose of us being on the island and, you know, um, you know, really, really what they were about. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And that is our time, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you guys, Thank you guys so much. Y'all are lovely. Thank you, you so much. Thank you.